Hi, it's Christina with the Sisyphean Journal. We are continuing our slog through chapter one of line five, the book I helped um, Mark Crutcher write back in the 1990s. And this section of chapter one, we are looking at women who contract diseases during their abortions because of unsanitary conditions. And this is a case where I was able to cross-reference and find out where two of the young women underwent their abortions. So that's going to make it easier to look for the lawsuits. But still, my source documents for all of these cases are the documents that um, Life Dynamics has on file. I don't have access to copies of them. So I'd appreciate anybody who would follow the link below. If you can get copies of these, let me know. So we have two cases that weren't fatal. Pamela went to Biogenetics in Chicago for an abortion on August 7th of 1976. And she was admitted, admitted to a hospital on January 27th due to serum hepatitis contracted through unsanitary, improperly sterilized instruments. Biogenetics is the facility where Cynthia Dennard, Susanna Chisholm, and Brenda Benton underwent their fatal abortions. <clears throat> then we have LaTanya, who went to San Vicente Hospital in Los Angeles for an abortion on January 21st, 1989. The next day, she was experiencing abdominal pain, vomiting, dark urine, yellowing of her eyes, and fatigue. On January 29th, she was taken to another hospital where she was diagnosed with hepatitis B, which was attributed to unsanitary equipment used during the abortion. San Vicente is the same hospital where Natalie Myers, Sarah Lint, Joyce Ortensio, Mary Pena, and Lonise Dorsey underwent their fatal abortions. And then we have the death of 15-year-old Sarah Nibel at Midtown Hospital in Atlanta. She was 17 weeks pregnant when she went in on May 6, 1994. They gave her a clean bill of health and sent her home. The next day, she reported a severe headache, sore neck, neck stiffness, and trouble seeing. Her parents began the drive to take her to the hospital. On the way there, Sarah became, began screaming and behaving strangely. When they got to the hospital, she refused to get out of the car. She was disoriented and stuporous upon admission. She went into respiratory arrest and was admitted to the intensive care unit where she was pronounced dead on May 11th. The cause of death was determined to be group B streptococci men and meningitis caused by infected amniotic fluid in her bloodstream. And it was believed that this strep infection got into her uterus through the instruments. Now, while we're on the topic of patients contracting diseases at abortion clinics, I have included a section of the Kermit Gosnell Grand Jury Report that covers when a doctor who had been referring patients to Gosnell noted that they kept coming back to him with the same sexually transmitted disease to the point where he concluded they had to be getting it from dirty instruments at the clinic. The state officials were notified about this and chose to do nothing.